Last week we had Natalie Bennett of the Green Party. This week we're joined by Nigel Farage, leader of UK Independence Party and a member of the European Parliament. How are you, Nigel? Very well, thank you. I'm just trying to get over this idea of politics doing you. But anyway, apart from that, yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, doing all right. It's a mental image, isn't it? And we'll, we'll come to that in a bit. <laughs> Tell us what UKIP stand for and what you stand for. Uh, they're the same thing, I'm pleased to say. We're a political party. Uh, we are the opposition to the establishment. We believe in nation. We believe in self-governance. We believe in democracy. We believe that responsible governments put the interests of their own people first, and that means a responsible uh, policy to control your borders and make sure the right people and the right numbers of people come to Britain. And above all, we believe that where British politics has gone horrendously wrong is we've actually given away the ability to run our own country to a set of institutions in Brussels who now make the majority of our laws. A bit more detail about what your EU policy is. Uh, not to pay them any money. What I want us to have is a sensible global immigration policy. In fact, it would be a rather more ethical immigration policy if we didn't discriminate in terms of where people come from, but we did discriminate in terms of have they got trades and skills, have they got criminal records or not, have they got life-threatening diseases or not, will they, will they be, be a benefit to our society? With so many unemployed young people in the UK, why do we allow in unskilled migrants from the EU? Because we have, because we have no choice. We have no choice. We're signed up to a set of rules uh, and we're now in a political union with ten former communist countries, very poor countries, that ever since 2004, ever since we opened the door, and it started with Blair and Boris still does it, the argument is we need unlimited cheap labour from southern and eastern Europe because young British people are too lazy, feckless and useless to want to get out of bed in the morning and go to work. And that's been the myth. Uh, Nigel, what are your ideas on democracy? Uh, my yeah. thoughts are uh, twofold, really. Firstly, that representative democracy has failed us. Uh, it used to work because we used to have parties on the left of politics and parties on the right of politics. And in the early elections, when I was first voting, who got into number 10 really mattered. You know, fundamental difference. Adam says, what will you do to tackle nationalism and homophobia in the politics of the UK? I think the nationalism element has been uh, really rather taken out. I think the British National Party um, had a brief flurry. Yeah. You know, from they're all coming out and saying they're going to support you now, aren't they? 2000. Well, I tell you what, the hardcore BMP wouldn't touch us with a barge pole. They absolutely hate us. Uh, get this mythology that UKIP's this and UKIP's that and UKIP's the other. You know, we've got an openly gay uh, man who is one of our elected MEPs. You know, I, don't make, I, don't make any, I don't make any big issue. Stance on immigration from UKIP, you cut net migration to, what, well, 30,000? I, I made the argument earlier that we ran for 50 years a policy of between 30 and 50,000 very successfully without immigration being a major issue in UK British politics. Well, means the reason why you haven't got the job, the reason why you've got low wages, the reason why your life is being destroyed is because of those people over there. The reason... That's what, the reason, that is what you're selling. Yeah. The, reason, oh, okay. the reason we have wage compression in this country and the reason that millions of British families are worse off than they were ten years ago. The but reason that's not the fault of the reason, the people in Europe. The, no, no one said it's their fault, but it's the fault of our politicians for allowing this to happen. Look, government, voting for government, is about voting for people who have control. Would you be concerned if a German family moved in, or a group of Romanian men? If a group of any men moved in next door to you, you'd be concerned. But what would... <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you? So if ten blokes move in next door, you think that's perfectly normal, would you? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, that's the point. Crisis in London, you so you think that was... You don't live in that. You'd be really to relaxed to about it. Or to live in zone three. I, the, I live the, in a place with 12 other the, people. Uh, You're not popular amongst young people. Are you... Why? One, why? And two, are you afraid of being on this and encouraging young people to register to vote? You're actually doing yourself out of getting more votes. Well, who, I mean, who's to say? I mean, look, firstly, do I think we should, we should be encouraging young people to vote? Yes. What do I think the key thing we could do to get young people to vote? Make politics matter. The people voted. They want to talk about education. Yeah. Um, where, do you, where do you stand on it? I ask everyone, are you for it? Uh, well, I wasn't very good at it myself, but, uh, yeah, I'm for it. Um, <laughs> I agree, they wasted their money horribly, yeah. Uh, they wasted their money horribly. But then again, if you live in a free country, it's people's choice to do that, isn't it? Or would you disagree with that? Do you think sex education in schools should be compulsory? And um, do you think that homosexuality should be addressed in schools? Uh, well, yes to both. But I thought, but, but I thought actually, 
that that was happening in our schools today. Big thanks uh, to you, Nigel Thank Bryce, you leader much. of UKIP, Thank for coming you. on. Uh, our incredible online audience, our superb studio audience, and the teams at Bite the Ballot, ITV News, Twitter UK, and Bite News. Join us next week for Ed Miliband, leader of the Labour Party, who will be tackling jobs, health, and democracy.